now to absorb some local color through the magic of AM radio. Harkens me back to my youthful, careful days on the playgrounds of Forest Park School and my gifted days. And what, oh, you're gifted, all right. <laughs> what were you gifted at? Well, I guess there were, I had some issues. Detention? There. Yeah. <laughs> when my dad told me I wouldn't plan on going to Harvard anytime real soon. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to get in touch with me. Uh, we're going to we're going to link all the volunteers via satellite cell phone so that we can put out the message immediately because you remember the problem we had in January. We had to have Governor Bye. Walker come in with the National Guard. It was horrible. Steve, listen to me. <laughs> Bring your own microphone. Because <laughs> you lost yes. this one. Okay, Captain Ron, you've been doing this so well for the last few weeks. Uh, so go ahead and make my day. Oh, great one with the magic <laughs> pen. Oh, boy, he wants that microphone forever, doesn't he? Now, you got to visualize it. We put a statue of Pete on this. Put him in, wearing like a hard hat and a flannel shirt, tool belt, snow shovel. You, know? you mean like from the village people? Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple. Now wait a minute yeah. here. Good morning, everybody. This is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the all new and improved Kenosha Today Weekly Report coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial. Streaming worldwide, booming across the wet and snowy cornfield of the Midwest on this, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Reaching out to over 50,000 homes here in the Tri County area. Being brought to you this morning by our major sponsor, the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, and a host of other very fine local businesses. With us this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot stop them. <laughs> you can only hope to contain them unless you have a leftover bone of prime ribbon in your refrigerator. <laughs> then in that case, just give the big dog a bone at 2 in the morning. <laughs> Little Stevie Casey joins us here in our Good Australia. morning. We are pumped up and ready for oh, some action today. Geez. We're going to have some fun today, Mr. Barter. Yes, uh, at any rate, we, we will. <laughs> yes, I was going on to something else. You know, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, that's easy yeah, for you to yeah. do. <laughs> At any rate, uh, also joining the A-team this morning, our video coordinator, Channel 14's trooper of the year, Captain Ron, joins us here. Good Happy morning, face. Captain Ron. Good morning and good donuts. Yes. Steve. And rejoining us, engineering the Kenosha State train wreck this morning, boys and girls, WIP's fashion shirt consultant, their six-time employee of the month, and also... This year's inductee into the Catholic Football Broadcasters Hall of Fame. <laughs> so Pete joins us. <laughs> the Pete. one and only member yeah. in that society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete, you got a little uh, Cyclops donut on yeah. your chin there. You oh, got it. You want to clean that up. Saving a that bit for there. when I go out and shovel later. Yeah. Uh, coming up right after our first break at 10:30, the Kenosha Today Lightning Round of City in Jeopardy trivia game sponsored by the House of Gerhards Restaurant. And I have the question in my hand. And it's been in the, and we also have the certificates, actually. <laughs> yeah, which house. is which is kind of rare, which is kind of <laughs> yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> you know, following rules is not exactly our um Well, our it's forte. certainly never been my forte, I'll clue you. So. <laughs> and then after the 11 o'clock break, this week's top 10 list written in our home office on the deck at the Boathouse Pub. And this week's category is the top 10 reasons we should pardon a turkey here in Kenosha. You should do what? Why we should pardon a turkey. You pardon know, a turkey? You know, the, the president always pardons a turkey. Which, which, which alderman are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and away we you know, go. La you know, last week, you know, we had uh, Father uh, Bill Hayward. Father out. Bill, and that was yeah. a big, uh, that was a big yeah. thing. Everybody seemed to have listened to him and uh, found this, it very entertaining. This week, I um, he's a priest. He, sh he wasn't supposed to be entertaining, but I, I did get the memo. <laughs> I did get the memo about this judgment deal before I get to heaven. And uh, oh, he was pretty firm on that. You know, this this going through judgment before I get to heaven. You know, you guys ain't gonna believe the paperwork you got to fill out for this. Oh, I know that. And, and apparently, um, there's a second copy that goes to someplace else. <laughs> so just in case, I'm not sure what that's Yeah, but about. I'm in the Catholic Broadcasters <laughs> Hall of Fame yeah, yeah, now, so, so I'm good. Yeah, good to go. <laughs> and hey, there's even more good news, boys and girls, tomorrow at noon each and every Sunday. You can tune in here at WLP AM 1050 and listen to the replay of this show. Why? Why? Yeah, we missed it. Why? <laughs> I almost missed it. Yeah. And then you can watch the replay of this finely tuned, professionally produced excuse for a radio show on Time Warner Cables, Channel 14, uh, Tuesdays at 5 p.m., Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And the media's making a monster out of you because they don't care about the truth. All they care about is entertainment. Well, you need a forum where they don't even know the meaning of the word entertainment. Public access television. I will say the cream's getting in my <laughs> mustache here. Now, I'm going to have to apologize. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to apologize in advance. I'm taking some very important phone calls from volunteers and the National Guard in regards to the snowfall today. So if my phone rings, I'm going to have to scoot out of the studio and see if I can organize but this. But to all our listeners, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't get too depressed out of this s storm because I figured it out. There's only 93 days left before the pitchers and catchers 
uh, report to spring training. So that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I was just going to ask Peter. It's too early to start playing Cub fans, uh, a dying Cub fans' last request. But I guess we'll hold off. On we'll that. hold off on that until yeah, yeah. you know. I did. Uh, I did talk to Donut Dave. Uh, he stopped over at the planning center. Uh, he's got the plow on the front of his truck, and he was uh, himself headed out to the White Caps neighborhood. Yeah, I've got a couple guys that uh, yeah. called me this morning and and got the plows and wrote to him. Organizing the troops out there at the Brad Stout. We're going to do what they say can be done. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm East Bound to find no bandit run. Well, the good news. Well, the good news is I talked to the uh, Trump campaign this morning as well, and they are sending the Trump uh, helicopter, uh, Trump One, uh, to Kenosha County to evac uh, evac residents out of the White Caps. This is where the discipline, the training, absolutely the watching the films, the weightlifting. That's this is where exactly it all right. comes. Yeah, in. it comes down to a bad snowstorm. Yeah. you know, right in, in the Kenosha neighborhood, and White Caps is in distress. Yeah. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. No, good, I've right. her up. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Hey, uh, this is Mike from Kenosha. Yes, sir. How's it going? Oh, fine. Thank you for asking. Hey, just a heads up. Uh, a lot of um, just whoever is listening out there, a lot of big branches are falling all over the place. So just a heads up. Where, where, is that in all of Kenosha County or just um, the White Caps? On 42nd Street, uh, 47th Avenue, in that area right off of 142. Ooh, that's by my house. Yeah. Oh. So, well, uh, we, a lot of big, a lot of big branches coming down. Well, we certainly appreciate the help. All of our volunteers are headed out to the 17th district, so we'll see if we can't get some other crews to clean some I know trees the out. City, uh, I know the city plow came through, and he had um, he was on his radio, and I think he was radioing it in. So no, he's listening to this show. Just in that show. area, be careful. <laughs> He was uh, probably listening to this show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the city employees listen, uh, to, listen this, to, the, yeah. the, to this station. So. Yeah. We'll yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, Mike. Thanks. Wow. You know the, Don't uh, think he picked up the humor on that. No. <laughs> what, he says, all your listeners on Ghost Woman. All four of them? All, 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 all four of them. We know who you are, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's coming in on down in uh, Green Bay Road. Yeah, apparently there's no power in the 17th District. Oh. The uh, oh. their, their utility poles down. You've got people uh, uh, distressed. I ran bottled water out there this morning, so. Well, why don't you run some bottled vodka over to Barber well, Man? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've got, of course, there's dry pavement on yeah. 22nd oh, Avenue. Yeah. Go, go, and the sun's out. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Good morning, everybody. Surely. Hi. Hey, uh. We, we, yeah, we got a, a special song for you. Did you do well uh, selling your booty? I sure did. Well, here you go, baby. <laughs> Thanks to us. Yeah, so I did really good. Now, Shirley, I got to ask you a question. I got to ask you a quick question. When you called in and you were talking about selling your booties, <laughs> did you know that we had a Catholic priest in the I studio on the air? Did not. I did. I was so busy at the fair, and, and the nice lady that runs it, she said, Shirley, you're really helping it by talking on the radio about the fair. So I thought, well, I'll call one more time, and I did mm. not. I'm so well, sorry. Well, this is not going to look good on your resume when you, when you get to Judgment Day. You know, <laughs> I'll be there. Probably ahead of you. But, uh, all I could say is forgive me. I didn't know. Well, I've well, got that's powers, all right. but not to forgive. Hey, you. Shirley, just real quick before we uh, go on to the next call, you all set for Thanksgiving? Not really. No, I'm not. Well, well, then thanks for calling. Well, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be our Thanksgiving show. Yeah, I know. You're but bringing I nothing just, to the table, like the guy sitting next to me. I'm behind this year. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, I it's just, Thursday, so. I know, right. I know, and in this weather, I can't get out today. Oh, I, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, we've got some people coming over to help you snow shovel today. I've got uh, Donut Dave coming over, going to plow your driveway. Oh, great. Right after right, he plows the side of the parking lot. I've got to run. Be, be good. Okay. Have a great ho holiday. Happy Thanksgiving. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, Ah, that must be somebody that is in dire need of help if it... Is that somebody calling you? That yeah. could be uh, the Trump uh, people. I'll be oh, right back. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's take our own phone call while you're doing it. Good morning, on Kenosha today. Scott, it's Carl. I'm going out to the 17th district. The plow truck is full of gas. I got 12 illegal Mexicans on the oh, back geez. with snow shovels. We'd, we'd expect nothing less. <laughs> 
Oh, now we're down to 16. <laughs> King George just confiscated four of them for the town of Summer. Hey, do you got the special roadkill uh, adapter on there so you can not only plow the snow, pick up the roadkill at the yeah, same time? We got the roadkill chili on the uh, snow going right now. Okay. I do need a couple more skunks, though. If anybody's got any dead skunks laying around, let me know. Uh, we'll, see get if, them. we'll see if one of our, we'll see if King George from Summers calls in there you <laughs> for go. a dead skunk right. in the middle of the road. Okay, Carl. This is where the training pays off, so we're counting on you. The okay. skunk got well, squashed, and there you are. You got your dead skunk in the middle of the go. See, that's what I like about our crew, Stevie. Not only can they... Um, and when we get down in the 17th, we're going to go down to Bjorn to take care of the sidewalk for him. Yeah, his bid dollar, tax dollars ain't exactly working. He was worried about this yesterday, but the snow hadn't even hit yet. Well, Carl... Well, I, I, the sidewalk for him. Okay. And then we're going to be going over to uh, Casey's joint and take care of the funeral homes for him, you know. That's the way I am. I'm well, that kind of guy. Well, you know? Carl, I just got good news. <laughs> I just got, I just heard from the Trump campaign, and uh, Trump won the helicopter is uh, over Lake Michigan right now, headed this way to the White Caps to evac uh, any residents out of the neighborhood hey, that need to be. Hey, Carl, when you get over to, when you get over to Casey Estates, uh, plow around his belongings that are in the parkway. Don't yeah. don't put snow I, over those. I, I thought I saw like a tarp over there, but I think that was Anthony's pants. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we Holy cow. Hey, Holy I'm hitting them all too, baby. All right. Oh. All, right. all right. I got to get off to the 17th. All right. Boy, well, this, goodbye. Well, I'm, 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 looking, I'm, looking, I'm looking to hear from Dale, our chief volunteer, and uh, Paul Vagnoni. He organized, of course, he had some cell phone trouble uh this morning, and, and the, all the volunteers were, are also linked by two-way ham radios. So he put the word out there, and uh, we've got our entire crew, Scott, working out there in the 17th District. And, of course, for those who don't, is that, uh, I think I hear the Trump helicopter hovering overhead. Look out the weather window. Can you see them? Can you see them? Oh, no, that's right. They're on their way. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Alderman Bogdala, we're there for you. We are there for you, my friend. <laughs> Good morning, you're in Kenosha today. Good morning. Good morning. When you're going out to the 7th District, go first to the roundabout on 39th by the post office. You can't see the road. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> True story. Okay. Really? Uh, in the ditch. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, that's yep. pr- well I think that's Pleasant Prairie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, do, sorry. Do they, that's I, thought okay. maybe you, I thought maybe you could send Dave out there. Well, we'll send we'll send somebody out there. We'll get we'll get uh, Donut Dave out there right away. And then the Trump helicopter to of take course. care of traffic. They just landed, they're coming in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Hey, right. and just uh, <laughs> let's just let's just recap before we take the second call. Of course, you know when there were two inches of snow in January of this last year, you know the yeah. alderman the alderman of uh, the seventeenth district claimed that his roads were impassable. So I can't hardly imagine what six inches are doing to that neighborhood. I would think oh. that uh, there are lives in jeopardy. Oh, it's frightening. Get him help fast. We're going right. to get him as much help as he can. Yeah, we're Thank the, you. We're only two guys here. We're only two guys, but you know what? We've got, we've got the force of the people behind us, okay? People okay. like us, or at least they like me. <laughs> You're not exactly talking about my dating pool. Again, <laughs> yeah, no, not at all, not at all. Now, i got another question for you. Are you going to stop by on Thanksgiving Day and say hello to me? Well, we'll see uh, how far oh, I get. I put I out the invitation. I, I put out a... some special invitations to just some very select few of my favorite aldermen, and they'll get their uh, their email in the next day or so. All you guys are invited. Yeah. I got okay. 28 people coming to my house. So this is the rule. And come at noon when the football games start. Give you a Bloody Mary. We'll have a little snack. We'll have some jokes. I'll have a fire, fire going and in the fireplace. And get the hell out, right? And then you need to get the <laughs> hell out at 3 o'clock. <laughs> because I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the uh, the turkeys out of the oven, and I got a car from three to four because we're sitting down for dinner at four o'clock. So An you understand? Of carving? Well, I got two twenty pound turkeys. Twenty pounders. Two twenty pounders. What are you feeding the third army? No, I'm feeding twenty eight people. So do you understand? Get out at three o'clock, Scott. <laughs> I've got. I here's my Thanksgiving. I got a four couple. I, I no. That's a little. Yeah. That's four a stretch. Ounce turkey. <laughs> we have. Uh, I got a couple of TV trays and. Um, um, a couple rolls, dinner rolls. That's probably about it. Wow, living on Peter, is this? Nope. 
you know, th this person that's calling, and it's if it's restricted or whatever, well, we, got the we, we have uplink. to put the satellite. Oh, well, well might, the, the deal is this. The, now, we're a talk show, and we, we don't screen our calls. So when they call in, they go right on the air. But in, out of all due respect, we're not going to take a phone call from a restricted phone number or unavailable, or unavailable because it could be a prank call. we're just not that stupid. And we want to... <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about it here for a second. Well, you know, no wow, you got an attitude today, boy, Pete. Boy, Pete. No. You know, I haven't been gone a couple weeks. Is that us? Yeah, let's try this. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Hi, guys. It's Cindy. How are you? Over hey, here. Cindy. How are you? Not too bad. We got so much snow in my front yard, it looks like Charlie Sheen's coffee table. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got it. Yikes. There was, a, there, was a time, that one? there was a time where that meant something to me. Yeah. I'll <laughs> 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 wait on that. No. Well, well, anyway. Hey, Cindy, do you, got, uh, do you, do you have access to a four-wheel drive? Otherwise, we'll come pick you out. We need, we're going we're gonna to need some help in the 17th District. Yeah. Actually, my husband hurt his hip, so I could use some of that help out here. Where do you live? <laughs> Uh, Bristol. Well, oh. She lives way the heck out in Bristol. Well, I'm closer to Antioch, actually. I have a Bristol. I have a Bristol address. They take care of my mail. I vote in Salem, and I have a Trever phone number. Sounds like somebody's chasing you around the county. Yeah, sounds like <laughs> Kenosha County, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, good luck with uh, good luck with Charlie. We hope you have a. We hope you have a very no, nice. Stay uh, away from him. <laughs> we hope you have a nice Thanksgiving, Cindy. You too, and I wondered, Steve, did you ever try that pear bread? I no. sent you the recipe. You know what? I think my wife is going to make that for this this coming up Thanksgiving. Oh, that's great! Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, pear bread. It sounds de it sounds delicious. Yes, yeah. and one day I mixed it up with bananas and made a banana bread. Wow! By mistake or with on pears. purpose? <laughs> Well, huh? you do you do know the difference between pears and bananas? Yeah, was right? this a mistake, or you just did this on purpose? Well, is this a joke? <laughs> As opposed to Charlie Sheen? Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not the show. I mean, oh, he oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Well, listen, I try. You're gonna are you gonna make some of that pear bread for Thanksgiving? Actually, I'm gonna make a pumpkin bread with a cream cheese filling. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I love to have prior to Thanksgiving? Uh, you know, when the guys come over, I have some friends come over for Bloody Marys and that. I love, uh, and I'll cook them on the grill, Ramanki. You know, bacon wrapped water chestnuts. Oh yeah, I oh, love that's Ramanki. Fabulous. You cook up about, with water about two, three, oh. th two, three dozen of those. Of course, they'll be gone by the time Scott gets there. <laughs> so. You know about the, the dip that you can make with that? It's actually ketchup and uh, grape jelly. Ketchup really? Grape you know what? Jelly. That sounds yeah. good, actually. It does make a really good dip, and you can huh. use that for those little uh, smoky links. Oh, well, Scott will be there at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's my kind of meal. Speak, speak, speaking of smoky links. Box wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got the box wine, and I'm good to go for three hours. <laughs> box wine and a half a dozen smoky links, and we're, we're, we're off. All right, Cindy. Yeah, well, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Now, Scott, wh where do you have dinner on Thanksgiving? I'm just curious. Do you? Okay, yeah. wonderful. She has to be because she's still in the will, at least at this point. Well, she, is, she's the one still talking to you, right? Well, I only got two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I meant. She's yeah, the one yeah. talking to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving, uh, the big Thanksgiving buffet from the boathouse at 49.7. Again? Yes, Mike. Hey, I got your joke before. You said there was only four listeners. I counted five, man. You guys are on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that last one? Do they want to say their names? Hey, uh, I think it was uh, that lady from Bristol. She was number five, man. Well, we are in a roll. See, we're booming <laughs> across the cornfields in the Midwest. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, Mike. Well, we just didn't want to have a good joke go to waste. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to call twice, but I had to do it because I, hell, I heard. But hell, at this point, you like can call three or four times if you <laughs> want. <laughs> we like you, Mike. Call three or four times. I don't really care. We're gonna hang up All on the rest right, of them. Man. All right. Hey, you guys. Uh, when you leave there today, drive safe. Okay. Yeah. All. All. All joking aside, we joke about the. Uh, it's snowing just in the 17th district, but, uh, um, you know, it is, uh, we do have a lot of snow out there, so seriously drive safely. Speaking of not letting a good joke go to waste, last time I was here, Steve wasn't here, and I found a new drop for, for Steve. You remember this, Scott? Oh, yeah. for, oh for heaven's sakes. For you remember this? Yeah, um, go ahead, refresh my memory. Dig your own grave and oh. save. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's coming back to me. Yeah, that. <laughs> now, that, that'll be the last time that'll run. Yeah, that, that's fine. Oh, I, figure I, get, on that. I figure I get once, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, Pete, you were in Green Bay last week. I was in Green Bay on Sunday. How many? Did you want to rip on? Um, I did not make. Rip it. Actually, I didn't make that broadcast for reasons, but I did make Green Bay. So, uh, yeah, I almost saw a big Packers comeback. Okay, wait a minute. I have a I have a snow alert here, Pete. Just real quick, I got a text from uh, Paul. He is willing to offer his uh, big green Afghan Packer <laughs> Afghan, which also can double as a sweater. And uh, he's offered uh, to get that out to the Whitecaps or anybody who needs that. It's a Green Bay Packer Afghan that can also act as a sweater. Thank you, Paul. Very Jeez, nice. When I said that, I got highly criticized. Right. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Paul, what is it, a sweater? Uh-oh. It's an Afghan. I love that. I, that never gets old to me. I woke up in the middle of the night laughing about that. So I've got oh, this you Afghan. Need, you an need Afghan. some real therapy. What is it, a sweater? So no. which, you you get up laughing and then you go down and start chomping on the prime rib bone. Is that at two? No, right. You know, I was I I was at uh, Gerhard's last night for a cocktail with with Dick and and he did ask uh, about that. And uh, you're right. I order prime rib with a bone in the prime rib. I bring the bone home. Two o'clock in the morning, I get up. I got to go to the bathroom. I come down. And I have a little uh, little gnaw on the bone down I there for refrigerator. The oh yeah, oh Kyle, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, I got it right yeah. here. Kyle. He is, uh, yeah, but you know what? Uh, he. It was a very nice article. Read the last sentence in the article in the white there. Yeah. Our biggest advice to all you is to enjoy a wonderful day with friends and family. Nothing is perfect, not even yeah, for a restaurant family. If you feel overwhelmed, take a moment to breathe or have a shot of yeah, Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got this wonderful recipe in here. And you pick up on that on the shot of Jaeger. Well, I got to tell you, and and Kyle is is of course the chef at Gerhard's, but but look at the recipe. It's it's a cauliflower au gratin. You know what? I got to tell you, as good as a cook as Kyle is, that does nothing for me. <laughs> How can this? Look at all this. You got too much, too much gas in it yeah. for you. Cauliflower au gratin. It'll stick to your ribs. You know, I mean, uh, ca- there there are two things that I do not eat: cauliflower. <laughs> And broccoli. Now I'm sitting here with you every Saturday for for two years, and I'm looking at you. Don't tell me there's only two things you don't eat, because <laughs> I'm just not buying that. You know, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of broccoli. I'm with George W. Bush. It's a vile this says, weed. This says cauliflower, not but that's broccoli. cauliflower. I don't like cauliflower either. Oh, okay. Well, no. Kyle, I'm lo- I love you because although love I did get an invite uh, over over to the house. You know, well, it's actually not from Kyle. It's from his father. His dad said, uh, stop by and watch a little bit of the football game. And I said, well, i got to be home at 3. You know, so And they live just two blocks from me. So I may walk over there so, and do a shot of Jaeger on Thanksgiving Day and walk So home. this invitation between 12 and 3, you not, might not be there. I may not be there, but help yourself. <laughs> well, this must have been. But this, now let's clarify this, this, again. This must have been uh, what your wife meant when she texted me, come on over, Steve, I'm going to be home. That yeah, was, okay, yeah, about yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> okay. But do you understand the part of when the football game starts, you can come over, have a Bloody Mary or a drink, and then do you understand the part, get your, get your, yeah, uh, but the Packers get out by 3 o'clock. Get your Packers, booty out of there. Packers yeah. don't start till 7.30, so I, I could be there a while. Well, that's the whole reason that we're eating at 4. we got to finish, we got to clean up and everything else, and we got to be able a to sit down and watch. and a half hour dinner? Tw- 27 people in my dining room. Well, let them let them clean it up. No, actually, my, my kids are real helpful when uh, after yeah. after a big Thanksgiving meal. I got two uh, two 20-pound turkeys Woo-hoo. right now thawing in the refrigerator downstairs. You know, they say it takes about five days to, th- for, for, to thaw a 20-pound or, or heavier uh, turkey. You know, when we get back after the 10.30 break, we're going to have our um, city in jeopardy. I'm going to really like and this. And then one of the topics <laughs> we should talk about, because we're talking about food, this I came across, 23 ways to lose weight this Thanksgiving, and I don't see anything that pertains to you. Do you know that uh, generally it's 3,000 calories, and then you add a couple of uh, the boxed wine that you have over at Casey Estates there? The boxed wine. You could be about 4,500-calorie meal, but this is probably oh, yeah. just yeah. nothing for you. Well, with the mashed potatoes and that, and then, of course, my, my mother-in-law brings the uh, absolutely pecan pie to die for, and she brings... I think she brings three pecan pies, uh, but one of them I stash in the basement refrigerator so that I can uh, have a little little snack about 11 o'clock Pete, at night. Pete, did you hear his statement there? To die for. To die for. And, then he's, and he's chastising you <laughs> with, his, for, with that new promo. Well, I, I, I figured he would let me do it once. I'd probably never again. Well, don't tell him you're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take our break for the weather like you don't know what the weather is. Just look outside. It's going to snow. And then we'll be back and we'll talk about... Uh, Snow removal, and then uh, this is the first day of uh, deer hunting. And then, oh, get this. Governor Walker signed a bill making upskirting a felony. 
That's right here. Santa you, Panera, you, could be in, you could be in big trouble. No more mirrors on my shoes. My life is pretty much over. So oh, <laughs> we'll, be back in a, we'll be back in one minute. Blue Ridge. If you just tuned in, this is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the Kenosha Day Weekly Report. Coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial. Brought to you by our major sponsor, the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, and a host of many other very fine local businesses. Also joining us, the big dog, little Stevie Casey, is here and looking for more. Good morning again, Kenosha. Also, uh, oh, don't forget, this is on, Kenosha is only a small fragment of our listeners. We, yeah. as, as Mike just called in, says there's five of them out there, and they can't all be living in Kenosha. Well, that's true. That's else. true. I know I keep things rather local, but yeah. uh, I apologize. However, also with us, our video coordinator, Trooper Captain Ron's here, and along with the WIP fashion consultant to the stars, the newest entry into the Football Broadcasters Hall of Fame, uh, Pistol Pete's here. Hey, i got to ask you a question, because you occasionally do the weather. This mm -hmm. new guy from Channel Brzezanski. 4. Brzezanski, yeah. What kind of uh, forecast is 5 to 9? That seems to be a big a big uh, I mean, window. Uh, I mean, you just, I, uh, I, I versus why don't you say uh, a lot of snow? Five to nine doesn't seem to be a very uh, detailed. I think they're waiting to see what the lake effect snow does, because that could up the total. Well, uh, we looked at him, Scott. For what that means? What that means is it can it could he's predicting snow of either five inches, six inches, seven inches, eight inches, or nine inches. Sort of a CYA forecast. Oh, <laughs> that clears it up. Uh, no. There you go. Okay. See? There, yeah. there Does you that go. make it a little easier for you to understand? Oh, there you go. No, I'm <clears throat> I understand. I understand. Yeah. Also, this show is being recorded for training purposes, or in our case, just so we can replay this tomorrow right here on WIP AM 1050. Wow, they play it, they replay us for on For two Sundays. years, you know, we had uh, certain folks that would listen to us, and we always had this moment to turn the tape over. Stevie, no more. Oh, that's at 11 nope, o'clock. No, nope, no, at 11 o'clock. We're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to babysit these kids. So, uh, so we're not going to give them a chance to turn the tape over. They nope. can record the first hour they're today on, on and the own. second hour tomorrow. They're on, they're on their own. Okay. okay. See, I'm, I have a birthday coming up, and I have this new sense of maturity. <laughs> <laughs> See how that's working out for us. <laughs> yeah, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Also, thanks to my good friend Steve Schneider. You can find us 24-7 uh, on YouTube. How about that? Kenosha Today Show, available 24-7, 365 days a year. And now, boys and girls, it's time to play Kenosha's fastest-growing game show sensation, the lightning round of City in Jeopardy, sponsored by the House of Gerhard's Restaurant. We're going to now clear the phone lines. Stevie is going to read the question, which is a very sophisticated, intelligent, multiple-choice question. And then you will get three somewhat intellectual answers to choose from. After that, you will hear the ding. And the first caller to correctly answer the question will win a $25 gift certificate to the House of Gerhard's restaurant <laughs> located at 3927 75th Street here in Kenosha. Open daily, specializing in fine dining, serving authentic German cuisine. Uh, celebrating their 50th year at the same location. What better place to spend the holidays? Call for a reservation at 262-694-5212, or you can find them on Facebook or at thehouseofgerhard.com. The phone lines are cleared. The phone lines are cleared. TV. Going to ask the question. We're going to ding the bell. First caller after the ding calls in with the correct answer. $25 gift certificate. And here we go. This is our Thanksgiving Day special. We all have very many things to be thankful for. I'm particularly thankful for my beautiful wife and children, my extended <laughs> family, and of course, as always, I'm especially thankful that I'm no longer an alderman. So is the city Kenosha. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Scott, that, Scott Barter. That part of the question? <laughs> that's part of the question. Oh, yeah. sorry. Scott Barter has many things to be thankful for as well, his uh, beautiful family, his grandkids, many other things. My question is, of the following... Which is Scott most thankful for? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Number one, a fabulous co-host that brings a little class to this fiasco of a talk show. Number two, that he is not running for mayor, thus not running the risk of being labeled as a three-time failed mayoral <laughs> candidate. Or number three, Long Island iced teas and four-ounce fillets. Which Ooh. is he most thankful for? First oh, caller with the correct answer to that question. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, you're on Kenosha Today. I would say number three. That's a winner! <laughs> number three, Long Island iced teas and four-ounce fillets. Who's calling? This is Tom. Tom, congratulations. How would you know that? Was that a guess or...? I was going to say number one because I've got Steve, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a winner. $25 gift certificate at the wonderful House of Gerhards. Well, what we're going to do is... Uh, Pete's going to take your information off the air, and uh, I guess I guess so then if I see you at the boathouse, you'll be buying me a Long Island iced tea. I'll buy my fillets. Sure. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right. All right, we got some Beautiful. other callers here, but hang on. Uh, We're going to take 60 seconds. Yeah, Pete will take some, some information. information. That's right. That's right. And then I want to read a couple sponsors. The Kenosha 
Good morning on Kenosha Today. I wanted to answer the quiz question. Well, you're, you're too late. Some we already no, we already got an answer. But well, what is your what answer? Were, what were the What were the options again? Well, you're not going to win anything. But go ahead, Stevie. Read uh, it again. The number one answer was uh, what do uh, I have to that, that he's got a what's he got to be thankful for? A wonderful co-host like me that brings a little class to the show. Number two, the fact that he's not running for mayor, so he doesn't run the risk of being a three-time failed mayoral candidate. And number three, Long Island iced teas or four-ounce fillets. I know what is. I know. I got a good one. I got a good one. Okay. It's. I know what he. Put your I hand under. <laughs> Just yeah, right now. Exactly. Before. How long have you been doing Kenosha today, anyway, Scott? It'll be 20 years in it. April. It was a long time. I remember when you were doing uh, the show when Larry Reitler had sports talk. Were you, were no, actually, actually, Larry Reitler was gone before I got Why there. I got there in '96. Okay. Uh, he, sports talk was by uh, under Jones Intercable. And then um, Kenosha today, uh, it was probably about uh, 95, I think, that was switched over to Time Warner Cable. Is Jason Rimka still over Oh, there? yeah. He's a great guy. He's a yeah. Jason's a great guy, he's, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. the guy that holds it all together. Nicest people you ever meet in your yeah. entire life. Yes. Yeah, this, this... Is, Ra is Ralphie still over there, oh, too? Yeah. Who? Ralph. Wow. Ralphie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ralph's still there. <laughs> I'm glad you're on the radio, though. Okay. That's good. Well, he's got Scott's got more of a radio face than a TV face. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> Thanks for the call, big boy. <laughs> Thanks for the call. All right. Please, look at those lines light up here, Pete. Pick uh, one. Let's do this one. Good morning on Kenosha Today. Steve, how are you? <laughs> oh, Paul, listen, I want to thank you so much for mobilizing the volunteers in the 17th District and your very generous offer to donate your Green Bay Packer Afghan, which also can be used as a sweater <laughs> or a pair of sweatpants. You know, I was thinking, too, if we wanted to, we could chop it up a little bit in little smaller pieces and use it for booties as well. <laughs> Green Bay Packer booties. Boy, there you go, thinking outside the box. Shake, shake, shake. Yeah. <laughs> So if, does this have your name on it? And so this will be Paul Vagnoni uh, shaking of his booty. What <laughs> part of Green Bay Packer Afghan do you not understand? Well, I thought it might have his name, personal name on it. Yes, his mother, his mother stitched his name into the label so he wouldn't lose it. Well, yeah, <laughs> look with all my underwear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Paul, give us a quick update on the snow removal and the volunteers out in the uh, 17th district. In the 17th, well, you know the the, the Trump copter. It flew by over here, over here in the 5th District on the way to the 17th, and I noticed that Kayak Boy was hanging from the copter. Now, Paul, it must be going right over your house Paul, now. Paul, it must be going right over your house now, because we here can he hear is. it. He's got, you know, it must be cold up because he has a Hawaiian shirt on. He's not bare-chested. <laughs> <laughs> but he does have the logo on the bottom of the kayak. Hey, Paul, I'm <laughs> buying my wife a uh, tandem kayak for Christmas. Now she probably knows that, but... Uh, oh, jeez. Well, do you think you no, and I could... Does. Could you and I take it out together? You and I together? In the in the God. kayak, in the in the tandem kayak. Can't even visualize oh. that. <laughs> Can you, you imagine that? Quad, you better get a quad kayak for us. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I'll, I'll buy two. I'll no, buy two. No, I'll be up scared at two in the morning. <laughs> right, Paul, well, Paul, we wanted to thank you for all your uh, coordination of the volunteers. Alderman Bogdala certainly appreciates it as well, so... Okay, well, thanks a lot. Have a great I, I, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good Thanksgiving, all, right. all of you. Our phones are still lit up here. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Hey, is this the uh, SSPR show? It could SSPR be. SSPR show. <laughs> What's SSPR, Scott, Steve, Pete, and Ron show. Oh! Yeah. Very nice. I like Listen, that. Listen. Understand one thing: we give the trivia questions. Don't try to stump us. <laughs> <laughs> what did we win for that? Now wait a minute. Is this is this our head volunteer? Uh, yeah, this is Dale. From oh, Dale, give us give us an update on the snow fallout. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, now, yeah, slow down, slow down over there. Hold on. <laughs> I, I had I rented a bus. Oh, uh, good and, for you. Uh, good for you. Went up to uh, Home Depot and got a bunch of volunteers. And shovels? I hope you brought shovels. And shovels, they supplied us with the shovels. Or, uh, we're getting pretty close to the 17th District now. So See, Dale, this I've is been, where... I've been showing these guys some training tapes in their language. This is, so this is, where, this is where all the discipline and the training you did all summer long and, and the weightlifting and, and, and having these guys learn how to speak English, 
uh, and learn how to use a snow exactly. shovel. This is where this pays well, off. This is this I've is game day. I've got a translator with me today. Well, this is game because day. This and was it's, an emergency. I couldn't uh, find English speaking people. Hey, Dale, Dale, <laughs> do me a favor. Leave it all out there today. Yeah. Today is what you've trained your entire life for. Remove oh, that I, snow. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it my all, man. Leave it all out in the streets. <laughs> but on a more on a more serious note, or you mm. know, do you guys know? why it takes five sheriff deputy squad cars to control the traffic at 5.30 in the morning at Amazon. That's when their shift ends. Five. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm serious. Um, They've got one that sits on uh, Highway N <clears throat> and East Frontage Road. you got three in the middle of uh, Amazon at each entrance. Hmm. And then there's one on 142 and uh, East Frontage Road. Well, how do you I know mean, this? The traffic is it's terrible. You've been out there 5:30 in the morning. Uh, that's when I'm on my way to work. I oh. go past on the interstate. Well, I got to tell you, if they have that kind of congestion out there, then somebody did something wrong. There ought to be some kind of traffic control out there. We shouldn't no, have to is, have. This is every morning. Well, I know that's what he's saying. You know, but I'm but I'm just but but my, I'm saying is who's paying for it? Are we paying that? Well, sure. Who do you think? Uh, well, that's that's my point. That's my point. If we got to put five five deputy sheriffs out there to control the traffic, then there, there's a problem. Hey, you know what, Dale? There is a uh, traffic light, I think, on Highway 50 that goes into the Whitecaps. They don't yeah, need that. Let's let's go hijack that thing and take it out. We could take that yeah, out to can, Amazon. And, and exactly. Put it on 142. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Well, the, yeah, the people in the well, Whitecaps. Maybe, maybe it can run out to Amazon when I drop you guys off. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> listen. There's nobody coming and going from Whitecaps all day today. They they are completely snowbound. Now there's dry pavement on 22nd Avenue because everybody knows it only snows in Whitecaps. Oh right. Well. Right. I, do you, do you think the people from outside the area understand this is all just a bit and a joke? Well, I get I get done dropping these guys off. I'm going home and sitting in my lawn chair. <laughs> well, it's sunny on Roosevelt Road, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You better, yeah. better yeah. use sunblock. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Well, I'm, we're really proud of you. Well, yeah. maybe today cloud block. Yeah. But we're really proud of you and the effort that you put in training all these uh, folks. Well, all and the fact that he rented, rented a bus. And I rented a bus. <laughs> yeah, send, yeah, send the receipts to... Uh, to, uh, to to Kenosha today, we'll take care. We'll reimburse you for all your expenses. We certainly appreciate uh, <laughs> you know, all, right, all of well, the help. Well, thank you much. And maybe I'll have to stop by uh, Thanksgiving Day, Steve. Between noon and three, as long as you get your ass out by three. <laughs> <laughs> That's an invitation. It says, I love you, and thanks for coming. All right, Dale, i got to take some all right, more calls. You guys thanks. have a great Thanksgiving. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Hey, last caller. I work at Amazon. Yeah? Hey, I work uh, nine... Okay. No, uh, I think we lost. Are you there? Caller, uh, we, we lost oh. you. Call back if you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, right, I'll take this, this other call. Call me back. Good morning on Kenosha today. Good morning. I was wondering if I could air a gripe. Sure. As long as it ain't about us. No, it's not about you, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're a little bit desperate. We ain't stupid. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, All right, go the, ahead. The uh, United Hospitals, uh, St. Catharines in Kenosha. Yeah. They are dismissing many of their doctors, and I really would like to know why, because now I'm going to lose my doctor, and I don't want who to is, lose her. Can I ask a personal question? What's, what's your, who's your doctor? No, let's not go there. Oh, okay. Let's well, not go there. Yeah, I don't think it's good uh, is it because of Is it because of retirement, or what's the no, issue? No, no, no. Uh, I asked my doctor, and she said something about her contract was up. I thought, well, what kind of contract? She's a very good doctor, and I'd hate to lose her. Well, what what they do is, I'll give an example of my personal physician. Um, uh, He was in private practice for many, many years. I won't mention his name. He's retired now. And United Hospital bought his practice. Mm. So then they buy his practice, and all the patients now come to United Hospital Systems, and he's in the clinic there. And then when his contract expired, he chose to retire. But built into a lot of these physician contracts are no compete clauses. Well, so, my, my doctor uh, is too young to retire, and she doesn't want to leave. She says she has to. Well, maybe they're not renewing her contract for whatever reason. Well, she's not the only one. There's several others that I have heard are leaving. Well, you know what? Well, and, 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 we'll get to the bottom of yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll make some calls and, and see if I can find an answer. I sure would appreciate it because I hate to get a new doctor. Okay. All right. Thank you very right. much. You know, Steve, uh, maybe she could use my doctor. 
he works out of a red panel truck at the Boathouse parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be affiliated with Dewey Cheatham and Howe, but then he got the leg monitor. So, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Hey, I'm sorry. This is Danny Alpro. Hey, I work over at Amazon. Okay. Good shit. Okay. Anyway, to make a long story short, just like all typical freaking WIP callers are uneducated with big money. You know how much money them people give in taxes? Imagine if the casino was they're protecting the cars in the parking lot is what they're doing. Okay, They're protecting the cars in the parking should, lot. Don't you think Amazon should uh, hire their own private security force? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead right, of having it on our right, tax dollar? But, but the owner of uh, Amazon started in his garage like Mr. Uline, Mr. Ulin. Anyways, he's the third richest man in the world right now behind Buffett and uh, <clears throat> Bill Gates. Okay. It's a beautiful thing out there, guys. There's like 6,000 people who work there. I know everybody in the town, and I go in there. I know maybe 10% of the people. They're all from Chicago, Illinois, um, Milwaukee, Racine. They're coming from everywhere, all ages, all all all. That's well, and thing. we certainly everybody. And we certainly it's appreciate. Beautiful. We certainly appreciate Amazon being here and the jobs that it provides. But I'm I guess I'm telling you, it's but, well, huge, you guys. But my huge. my my point is this: you pointed it out. The owner of Amazon is the third, you know, richest man in the in the in the world. He's a billionaire. Yeah. You know, at what yeah, point he can't give us a thirty minute free uh, lunch? Hey, I don't understand. <laughs> well, why can't why can't they hire their own security? I'm lo I'm losing you. I'm going to have to let you go because you're cutting in and out. Listen, but nobody's. we're not criticizing the fact that Amazon employs how many thousand people. It's it's yeah. all good. But at what point do you say to yourself, why do the taxpayers have to foot the bill for the Kenosha Sheriff's Department to do traffic control out there That's, yeah. You know, on a daily basis? That's a valid point. I guess I'm going to ask some questions and maybe make a call to the county and try to figure that no, out. I just, got, that they, doesn't seem right. they got enough money to uh, finance their own uh, private. That's place. right. That's right. See, we, we're full service here. <laughs> Good morning, on Kenosha today. Hey, it's Mike in Winter of Hodonk Harbor. What can we do for you, big boy? Well, I have a question. You know, being in Illinois, the crappy state of Illinois, <laughs> and I live in Winter of Harbor, and I'm east of Sheridan Road and close to the lake. I have, uh, with all the snow, what's called PTSSD, post traumatic snow stress disorder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was wondering. I like you, Mike. <laughs> I like me too, thank you. <laughs> but I was wondering, do the people in White Caps that uh, live there in Lake Dale that has to work, do they qualify up there in Wisconsin well, for Well, Mike, or? one of the things that I didn't want to talk about when we talk about the snow, so, uh, the snow, because I, I don't want to insult anybody. As as part of as part of the volunteerism, <laughs> no, as 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 part of the volunteerism that we've organized, we have also sent out. Um, post-traumatic stress counselors to be able to handle oh. that exact syndrome. Post-traumatic snowstorm syndrome is a legitimate illness, and yes, uh, and tough. we've got counselors uh, on site. Exactly. So. Well, I've had problems in the summer. Every time I open my freezer and see the snow, I have a flashback. The well, ice, you, there, there, there's snow. help out there. There's help out there. Have you ever thought well, of therapy? I get it. I said, if I'm, saying, I'm hoping your people up there get it, too, because, you know, in Illinois, there's you know, you just look the wrong way and you have some kind of disorder and it doesn't pay for it. You know, Mike, I think, uh, I think a shot of penicillin and a couple shots of vodka will, will cure this up pretty quick. Well, and Jägermeister will I, do the same yeah. thing. <laughs> well, that works for most people. I have to alter the uh, prescription with rum and coke. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, you know what, Mike? I like it more every day. <laughs> Take care, guys. All right. Thank you. Oh, Holy cow. Who has more fun on a Saturday morning? Historically, for years, was always the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I because, think all across the, yeah. every place. Is. Well, Sunnyside especially, because what we would do is we'd usually have four, oh, I think we'd have four bartenders on duty there. Thanksgiving night, we would have eight to ten bartenders and a couple of bar backs. It was five, six deep at the bar. It was just absolutely amazing. It was and this always when you a were good there? time. When I used to bartend there, that's right. Now, you... now, at this point, I draw a big circle around Sunnyside Club and make sure I don't go anywhere near there on Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. I, I think Mr. Hamlick's probably thinking, thank you. Absolutely. I, I heard uh, they were a true nonprofit in those days. When in those days, it was working. a true nonprofit. <laughs> you know, I think, though, because of the... Uh, the drinking penalties and the driving. It, you're right. 10, 20 years ago, every yeah. the, it was 
like every place was packed. Yep. But I think people got in a way. Well, you know, with the drunk driving and things like that, it used to be. I mean, you hear stories about when when you when you you were, and and nobody's. Uh, uh, you know, nobody wants to say that you're going to drive and drink and drive. But it used to be in the old days, if you got pulled over, the police officer would put you in the back seat of the car and give you a ride home. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. You get you get arrested and and, uh, and things like that. So you got to be safe out there. And plus, then the whole issue of the uh, smoking ban, you know, when they went after the taverns and this and that. So it's a whole different ballgame out there. I give, you know, a lot of these families, like the, uh, like the Matzers from the Boathouse and, you know, the Rudens and the Hamlinks and some of these other fine families, you know, just because they're in the adult beverage business doesn't make them bad. It's just how they make their living. And uh, and a lot of these families, Matzer and Hamlink included, are very philanthropic. You know, they, they donate to different causes and things like that, and they're good, clean, well-run establishments. You, know, you walk into the Sunnyside Club, and there's never any issues. The bartenders and the help there, the Hamlinks, they don't put up with crap from anybody. If you're not going to be a customer that's going to enjoy yourself and not be rude and, and start trouble, you're out. Get out. And I know Matt's, Matzer handles it the same way at the boathouse, which <laughs> which surprises me because he hasn't kicked you out. Really. Yeah, he does, too. Every five <laughs> every every day at 5 o'clock, you're gone. History. Scotty, but to go to your go. point, you know, the... Um, the Tavern League has really kind of uh, <coughs> policed their, themselves, and I know you take uh, like a, a group like Coins that s- seems like every weekend they're having a fundraiser. A fundraiser to, for different organizations. Or, or somebody that's got some medical you know, the, the Gascoigne family is the same way. They've so, always been very supportive uh, of different they, benefits. They watch it, and they have they got licenses, and uh, uh, I'm guessing Pete's shaking his head. Nope. Keep did going. you want to finish your thought, or did I'll you just you, want to... Uh, I'll let you know, uh-huh. Scotty. Yeah. Okay, right. Oh, you're going to give me the old sign? I will. Hey, before we go to a break, there was a... Uh... I'm just going to let it ring on him at this point. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> well, I want to talk about... Let's talk about that uh, time real quick. Can we talk about that sculpture that they put down in Civic Center Park? That doesn't look anything like Pete in the, in the sculpture that we suggested. No, you know what? And, and I'm, to, I'm upset. To recap, the Statue of Liberty that was down there, that Civic Center Park Two years across ago. from post, the post office, became in such disrepair that they couldn't fix it, so they took it down. It was a small, miniature yeah. uh, version of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, the junior class at... Uh, at Harborside, took it upon themselves to come up and raise money and make donations, and they put another sculptor there instead, a, a sculpture yeah. uh, by a by a, a, a well-known sculptor, right. and apparently it is a sculpture to uh, to honor some of the men and women who have served our, our country. And when I first saw the article in the paper, I thought to myself, you know what? It really should be the Statue of Liberty. And then I got to thinking about it, and this morning before I came here, I drove past it. It's a beautiful sculpture, you know, and and maybe maybe it needs to stay there. I don't know what your your well, thoughts are on that. Well, here's the deal: is it was in the capital improvement twenty thousand dollars to repair that Statue of Liberty. When I think what they did is they determined that it couldn't be repaired. Well, they put the Statue of Liberty in the history center. It's in the history center, and now. so now, yeah. but twenty thousand. Now this, uh, and I applaud those kids for. Uh, well, and they complimented, they complimented the city administrator as well because uh, I guess Pacetti worked real hard to, to be very cooperative. And it's a nice, it's, you, you can't fault the kids for doing that, but I'm a traditionalist. If there was a Statue of Liberty there, I thought, well, then put it back. There should be another Statue of Liberty, but I'm impressed. I went by it and I thought, that looks kind of cool. So I, my hat's off to everybody at Harborside who, uh, who helped do that, and, uh, and it was all fundraising from well, what I understand. In my view, it still should have been a Statue of Pete. With his tool belt yeah. and his hard hat and his snow shovel, like from the village people. <laughs> I, I think heard I've heard this, this somewhere before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, twirling! Yeah, oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> Just get yeah, you know, if you, if you get the toss, if you get the tassels going in opposite directions, you get a bonus. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's a, hey, that's that's a great that's a great story, and and thank goodness it was on the front page of the paper and not buried somewhere in page seven or eight because you hear all the bad news all the time. You know, and you never hear the good things. You know, so my hat's off to Harborside. But again, my first thought was, ah, they should put the Statue of Liberty back. But you know what? It's a nice sculpture. I, I give them credit. You know, speaking of the news, you know, they, they had an article. Speaking um, of topics that we could talk about. Well, it's a little bit different topic, but the concept. They come up with this article to help this, uh, I'm not going to na- say his name. He was a veteran that was in, a, uh, I guess... Oh. I guess we're not going to get to that, are we, Pete? We'll, we'll talk about for the that. Next hour, yes. <laughs> we'll talk that, about that right after. Yeah, 11 because uh, it's not exactly the way it turned out. And we'll be back in four minutes. <laughs> Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the all new. Okay, not necessarily improved. How is it? Today. How is it new? I, well, it's not necessarily improved. It's uh, not new. We've been here two years. To some, it's new. 
to you, it's new. <laughs> Weekly report coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial. Being brought to you this morning by our major sponsor, the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, and a host of many other very fine local businesses. Uh, I can't. Pete, is that? What do I hear? <laughs> do I what hear? Do you, oh, I, I, it's something coming in the distance. It's coming. That's wait for it. Wait for it. I don't know what. what it's wait for it. it. Taking oh, Sir's oh, journal. They are. Oh, that's the. That's the Trump, Trump helicopter. This is the Trumpicopter. Trumpicopter evacuating people from White Caps. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. He's so helpful. As you can tell, we're taking serious journalism to an all-time high, reporting on local stories, state stories spanning the globe. With us this morning, fresh from chomping on a bone, a prime rib at 2 in the morning. Little Stevie Casey enlightens us with his presence here. Where'd you get a prime table? rib bone in the 2 in the morning? Sounds good. Well, basement. I went to Gerhard's last Saturday night uh -huh. and brought home the bone, but i got to tell you what I made for dinner last night. Do we have some more sponsors we have to talk about? Yeah, can you can you hold off on Sure, I can hold okay. off on it, yeah. Uh... Is that thing going to land here in the parking lot? I think it's going to land in the parking lot. Oh, good. Somebody's got to get us out of here. And sticking with us through thick and thick, the always lovable trooper of Captain Ron. And the <laughs> ever-alert. Thick. Thick, thick, thick. thick and thick. Thick and thick. The ever-alert and a full command uh, engineer is to all-time highs, Pistol Pete. Good morning, Jesus. Pistol Pete. Impassable. The roads of the 17th District will as, soon as be impassable. Everybody knows that uh, th this Thursday is Thanksgiving. And, you know, one of the things that I came across uh, during the week was there's this myth on you know, the president always pardoning a turkey. And who was the first one? This picture that I have uh, shows John Kennedy uh, pardoning a turkey, and who then Harry Truman started it, and it was started with the uh, Rhode Island poultry dealers that was given the... Uh, yeah, where did that come from? Why would well, they, they pardon there a seems turkey? To be, uh, did they become a pet then, or what, what happens to the turkey when it's pardoned? Well, <laughs> they, they shoot and eat it. <laughs> but, I mean, it started back in, in 1914, the opportunity to give a president a turkey was open to all comers, and you know, uh, Obama uh, pardons turkeys, about the only thing he pardons, uh, a turkey uh, every year. And so this was written in our home office on the deck at the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, this morning's top ten category. These are the top ten reasons to pardon a turkey here in Kenosha. Number ten, sure beats giving up Slim Jims and Roadkill. Number nine, we desperately need another butterball to drive the trolley. Number eight. Permits city watchdogs to gather at the safety center and recite their Miranda rights. Community watchdogs. <laughs> community watchdogs. <laughs> Number seven. Highlights Free Bird is our new city theme song. Number six. All the pilgrims prefer gravy over super glue. Number five. Because we won't be giving a pardon to 11 million illegal immigrants. Number four. Allows us to give the bird to the next $100,000 study. Number three. Forces all the aldermen to sit at the kids' table. Number two. It worked for Charlie Sheen. And the number one reason to pardon a turkey here in Kenosha. Thank you, Lord, for letting us travel over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's new crack den. I love turkey. <laughs> I love lasagna. I love mashed potatoes. <laughs> Actually, cranberry. I must have read that pretty quick. Because you did. You, you hustled today. I hustled today. Yeah. Finger hurt. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you were saying? I love turkey. Oh, no, I thought you before you started this. Uh, about oh, last night, I got to tell you, I was going to take my wife to uh, Gerhard's last night, but my daughter came home from uh, Carthage. She lives in the dorms there. And did you know this is the other thing? Carthage closes the dorms for all of next week. It's we're, not Christmas break. It's called Thanksgiving break. She's home for a week. Oh, she's know? gonna love. That. She's gonna love that. Well, yeah. So anyway, she. she my <laughs> wife told me that Elizabeth's come. Will be home for dinner tonight, and I said, "Well, okay. Well, they like fish, and I like uh, I like meat." And I went and bought a uh, huge ribeye steak for myself, and they split. <laughs> so it's a, all uh, about you, right? Oh, pretty much. <laughs> they yeah, split pretty a much. Little fish. Fillets. No, I actually I bought a uh, like a one pound tuna steak. It's huge tuna steak, and I cooked. Uh, you know, tuna steak you could cook on the grill, but you need to cook it uh, rare. You know, tuna steak needs to be rare, and uh, and uh, so they split us tuna steak, and I made a ribeye steak, and man, I gotta tell you, it was can, good. Can I interrupt your ribeye? Sure, story absolutely. Here? <laughs> good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Hey, it's Anthony in Kenosha. Because you, you know guys? I'm all about that bass, about that bass. We're doing good, Anthony. What's up? <laughs> hey, um, I just wanted to ask Scott a question. Um, do you understand the function of humor? Do you understand what it means to be funny? I mean, like, are you attempting some type of... No, not at what, all. What are you getting with your list, man? It didn't even make me chuckle. Well, just go sit what at the, the kids' table. Do? Don't. Uh, 
Don't, don't be so well, critical. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Anthony. As long as you brought it up, <laughs> I I haven't understood the top ten list in twenty years. I, it means nothing to me. Now that's funny. <laughs> now See, that's you know, funny. Steve Casey. That's funny. That's a- hey, Anthony. I got a question for you. Going to stop by and say hello to my wife on Thanksgiving Day. Um, I don't know. We're going to take our shirts off and drink stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Why don't you come by? I told you you're welcome between uh, twelve o'clock and. I have been to the Casey House yep. Manor. I have been to the Casey Manor. I, I was a fun time that we had. Yeah, absolutely. I met, uh, the in laws and and uh, I, I, the I group even from Madison. Yep. And I even paraded you next door to my mother's house and introduced you as my uh, as my friend, which was kind of pushing it, but. <laughs> To bring your no. own sandwich. And you didn't even too. use the adjective black either. So no, that I was, so that's where I thought it was going, but I'm glad he avoided that. <laughs> well, you're more than welcome to join me for See, a bloody. Scott, Scott, that's humor. It was a little self deprecating humor. <laughs> Should I be writing this down? Well, Anthony, I'll be I'll be texting you in the next couple of days. You come by between twelve o'clock, but the rule is this: you got to get your big butt out of there by three o'clock because I got to carve the turkeys. Mm. <laughs> I will uh, try. Here, I want to try. We're doing dinner at two, I believe. Okay. We're, uh, we well, got come, uh, come by before. Hey, how about that? if I come over to your house? You oh, can always, Scott. You can always come over to my house. Okay. I'm not going to be there, but you're, oh, you're more than welcome okay. to come. Well, here's something that's amusing, and then we got to let you go. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, I hope you guys get out of the WLIP work bunker and not have to stay there all night long. No, we won't. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Bye, well, what, if, what if we got snowed in and we'd have to spend the night here? I well, got, I got what do we see about sleeping arrangements? I'm going to wrestle I'm gonna wrestle Pete for the last crawler. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a call? Pete? Yeah, as soon as I can find what I'm looking okay. for here. Okay, okay. yeah. Right. Now Good we're morning. Going. You're on Kenosha today. Good morning, gentlemen. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? You feel better about yourself now? Oh, thank you, Pete. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> now, Keith, Keith, I got a question for you. You're one of the uh, you're one of the anointed ones, so you are invited to my house for a Bloody Mary. And uh, this is really the haves you know, and the have-nots. With it's the haves and haves not. <laughs> but Keith, you're welcome in my house on Thanksgiving Day between twelve and three, as long as you get your ass out of there by three o'clock, because I got to carve the turkeys. <laughs> can, can you say ass on the radio? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Uh, holy crap! Did I say ass on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> You're just I, I, encouraging I just want to him. That. You know, I, I, don't, I hate to see you get fined again, Steve. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey Keith, where are you going for Thanksgiving? Actually, uh, me and my family this year we're going to actually go to Baker Street uh, buffets this year. Okay, well, why don't you go to the boathouse? Uh, well, we go to the Baker Street. You know, well, well you can go, go to the boathouse for sixteen ninety five, or you can go to Casey for twenty three ninety five. You can join the Casey family for twenty three ninety five because you'd have to sit at the children's table. I, I, I just want, I just wanted to call and and, and say, uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't make it to your house. Uh, thank you again for the invitation, and uh, and just wanted to let everybody know that uh, um, we have now banned watchdogs from the youth in the dog park just uh, for safety of uh, you know the people. So community watchdogs are not allowed at the dog run. They have to Correct. find their own corner to squat in. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Thanks for the update. Hey, how's the, <laughs> how's the uh, snow removal doing in your in your uh, district? Gone? Well, you know, you know I, I've had all, all year now, you know, to stock up on the dog urine for melting of the snow, and, and it seems to be working real well in District 9, so we're in good shape. Who gathers uh, the urine? Well, we have tanks underneath the dog park, kind of soaks up, and then we kind of filter it, and you know, so kind of get rid of the Jeez. smell. Well, that's really can, very can I, well thought out. Can I say something that really would make perfect sense here? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a priest in this week, so I think oh, they're okay. You, but they're, you, thought, they're, you must have well thought this program out. Yeah, right, no obviously. kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Well, you know, you've got to take care of my district, you know, and keep the roads clear. And I, I know, you know, there, there's a certain district that has issues. I don't know why. Oh, for heaven's sakes, know. really? Yeah. <laughs> this, just, just don't understand it. This ought to help your reelection campaign. Well, I'm hoping, you know, like you said, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I, I did file my papers. I'm officially running for re-election in the ninth district. Uh, right? Congratulations, Keith. Well, thank you. And you gentlemen have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. And, uh... And uh, be safe out there on the roads, and just encourage people to slow down because there's already been so many accidents out there. People just forget what how to drive in the snow. Yeah, this all really all, heavy, wet stuff. So be slow down. Yeah, just, all joking aside, just be safe out there. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, everybody's in a hurry to get nowhere, and just take your time so nobody gets hurt or God forbid 
gets killed on, uh, during the holidays. Well, Keith, like I said, you're more than invited to my house to, to say hello to the family, and you're always welcome. You know that. Yes, I do. And, again, that's why I call to thank you for the invitation, sir. All right. Have a great day. Hey, you too, guys. Who ain't the dog sound? Who ain't the dog sound? I tell you. He put some thought into that. <laughs> he put a little thought into that whole uh, dog. Probably uh, too much. Uh, yeah, no kidding. No you know, kidding. when he says, when you said, all joking aside, that's what I should have told Kennedy when he called. <laughs> he probably figured that part <laughs> <Yeah>. out, right? <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, you know, he did, uh, he did come by a few years ago to say hello to the family, and he took, a, uh, he took a piece of pie off my mother's dining room table and stole it. Again? Again. Let me take this. He, he He's a food this. thief. <laughs> Good morning. You're on Kenosha Today. Good morning, men. Bruce. Yes, Bruce. I'm calling you to give thanks. Because I just came from downtown Kenosha, and I'm thankful as hell they didn't do that trolley because it's a mess this morning. And I couldn't even fathom what it would have looked like with that monstrosity going up and down the street. What, was the trolley going this morning? Or just, no, I'm what? saying the proposed trolley. Oh, I yeah. was just oh. downtown, did Library Park, stopped yeah. off at a local business. And stopped at the post office. You had a beer, didn't and you? Man, I'll tell you what, they couldn't Bruce, handle any Bruce, trolley. Come on. What time was handle? Fex now, Place open, Bruce, Bruce? You just said you stopped by at a downtown business. Be honest, you had a beer. You stopped and had a beer. No, actually, I didn't, but I could smell the beer from the business next door. <laughs> well, we're too trying... early for that. Too early for that. If I do anything this time of day, I'd go with Shirley to the garage. <laughs> Oh. Wow. Do we have that? Well, piece? she keeps her pot in there, and she yeah. keeps her booty in there, too. Yeah. I think we have a clip of uh, Shirley where she keeps I her... I put my pot out in the garage. There you go. So. Yeah. But so I just wanted to give thanks, because if they had put that trolley down there after riding through there about 40 minutes ago, they couldn't have handled it. You're absolutely Thank you. right. All right, Bruce. Thanks. Thank you for the call. You know, I got to read some sponsors. Read some sponsors. But you know, my mother has nine grandkids, and Christmas is really all about the kids. But sometimes, you know, we'll go to some, we'll go to grandma's house, and it's almost as if you got to bring home wagons and wagons full of of presents. And you just think to yourself, self. you know what? I just don't like the whole present. <laughs> I think to myself, self, because a lot of times that's what I call myself, self. I said, self. I don't like the presents. You want to know what we call you? <laughs> too many presents, too much pressure, too much this and that. Thanksgiving is just a laid-back day. I'm not going to leave the house except if I wander down to uh, Kyle and Jessica's house, Rudin, to maybe, uh, to maybe. no, both toilets are properly functioning at this point. You did it with a permit. Eh? Well, and Lee Plumbing put in a turbo, a turbo flush on the first floor. It's, one, it's a turbo flush. It's got a tank. It's got an air tank. They, they sell these now. They're turbo flush toilets. Well, Casey Estates is a full service. Oh, we're full mm -hmm. service, yeah. Now, now, just remember, now, are you going to swing by and see me on Thanksgiving? I don't know. I, I okay, just, well, just get just, your ass out by 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah, can I come over now? <laughs> I'll be waiting at 6 in the morning with a snow shovel just in case. Um, Watch a little football, have a Bloody Mary, maybe a, maybe a bacon-wrapped uh, bacon chestnut. Well, you know what? This I we started this before. Twenty three ways to lose weight on Thanksgiving. You, you're, you ain't gonna you lose weight at my house. I'll no, yeah, I, can see, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, they say uh, an average average calorie intake on on Thanksgiving is forty five hundred. Uh, I don't think I eat that in a week. I, I, I got a legitimate question. Maybe sure. a caller can help me with yeah. this. I have never brined a turkey before. And I got a buddy uh, yeah. who I work with at the funeral home. He brines his turkey, gave me a recipe, and uh, I'm thinking about doing that overnight. He says he submerges his turkey in a pail full of its combination of apple juice and cold water, and then he throws some seasoning in there and some kosher sea salt and some things like that, and the, and the turkey soaks all night long, and that's what brines it. Well, I, I don't know how what the proper way to anything, brine turkey anything is. Anything to kill the turkey flavor. Yeah. I'm all for it. Well, I think uh, we're going to take this call, but I think Jim Matzer, if he's listening, call us because he. I think he does knows he brine a turkey and smokes him. I think. Well, I smoking is good, but I I, I, I want to know how to brine a turkey. Okay. Good morning on Kenosha today. Good morning, uh, learned gentlemen. It's Iris Ruth. I want to tell you what I'm thankful for. Okay. I am thankful that my last three walkers, because I have a fracture in my back, um, I have purchased them at resale shops instead of applying to Medicaid for them, which they charge like $150. So I'm thankful that I'm a good citizen, and I don't think that money grows on trees and the taxpayers are an unlimited source of income, 
and the country is a joke. And my income is $5,000 a year, half of the poverty level. And I purchased my own walkers. Well, God love you, Irish Ruth. Good you for you, Irish right. Ruth. And he loves you, too. All have right. A blessed, have a blessed Thanksgiving. Oh. Happy, you, happy Thanksgiving. Bye. If you've ever brined a turkey, call in and give me some advice. Now, how I usually prepare my turkey is 262 694 What the hell are you laughing at, Pete? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if you've brined a turkey, call in and tell me. Okay? <laughs> I can't talk about brining a turkey now? Um, this is not for you. No, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff my turkey. But now, now, this is the other thing. This is the other thing, Ryan. Did you read this? My wife read this in a cooking, home cooking, or how, good how, housekeeping or something. Maybe this is someone who brines a turkey. All right. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. JT from the Boathouse. JT, just the guy we wanted just to Just the about. guy that we wanted to talk about. Now, tell me how to brine a turkey. The way I do it for my family, I actually did this uh, a number of years ago on uh, Scotty's show over at Time Warner. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm surprised. I was waiting for him, so he wasn't paying attention. He never I was waiting for him to give you the uh, the play-by-play. He doesn't remember what he did yesterday, let alone 10 years I ago. I did talk to you yesterday, didn't I? It was early, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. All right, how do you do this? Anyway, the, the way I do it for my family at home is it's very easy. You take a cup of kosher salt. Okay. A cup of sugar. Okay. One gallon of vegetable stock. You can buy it at any oh, you know, okay. grocery store. I've got to write this down. And a gallon of ice water. Now, I uh, my turkey's actually brining right now. I brine mine for a week. Ooh. Now, what and is what actually, is brining, JT? What does brining do to a turkey? Yeah, it just adds moisture to it, you know. And uh, the good thing about this one with the vegetable stock, because you know, is, is it seasons the meat internally, you know? Okay, so vegetable stock, a gallon of water. You've, you've got to submerge it. You've got to have a pail big enough to, to do this, right? Yeah, like a five-gallon bucket. Yeah, okay, because I've got two 20-pound turkeys. Now, Salt. now once you brine the turkey, you can still stuff it the way you normally would, correct? You can, yeah. Okay, absolutely. because I stuff my turkey with apples and oranges. I've been talking about that for the last two years. Okay. You know, and, and that'll keep it moist as well. But but vegetable stock, kosher salt, and, and how, how much vegetable stock? One gallon. One gallon of vegetable stock. Wow. One ice gallon water. of vegetable stock. And then and then the rest water. and then the rest ice water and that's it with kosher. No, no, you said sugar. Sugar. One cup of sugar. One cup of kosher salt. One gallon of ice water and one gallon of vegetable stock. Okay. Okay. Now my wife uh, was reading a recipe where if you have anywhere between a ten and a fifteen pound turkey, what you can do. Turn the turkey over and cut the back bone off of it, and then and then split it. So you cook it, you 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 kind of butterfly it, mm-hmm. and you can cook that at four hundred and fifty degrees for an hour and a half, and the turkey's done. Oh, probably. I mean, there's you know probably whole more than one way to cook a turkey. You know, JT, I got one more question, then I got to let you go. Absolutely. How many? No, this is pretty technical for you, and I'm sure you can help me out here. How many Long Island iced teas would it take me to get brined? Uh, for you, I'm surprised you're not brined already. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're just kidding. That's great. That's great fun, right there. That's right. You know, you know, I've never seen Scott here at all around three o'clock on the corner of the bar ever in my life. So I've never seen good. Him good here, answer. So. <laughs> good. All right, all right. I appreciate. All right, guys. Have right, a good uh, holiday. Good morning, on Kenosha today. Yes. Yes. Uh, I saw a cooking show the other day where she made uh, the brine for the turkey. Yes. yes. And she put a whole quart of whiskey in her. Oh my! Yeah, I couldn't read the label, but it was well, black. I could think of I can think of a better use for whiskey than brining a turkey. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then I was wondering, <laughs> what did she do when they when she took the turkey out cooking it with all that good whiskey? <laughs> well, I was going to say you put that on a tumbler with an ice cube, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, she she put a whole bunch of stuff in there. I see on and on, but yeah, now then have, she got the bottle out, started pouring. Says, "Well, I'll put the whole thing in there." Have you ever brined a turkey or no? No, I've never done it. I, uh-huh. I'd be afraid to. Right? Have you ever had whiskey? Oh, once in a while, yeah. About every day. <laughs> you're, one, you're one for two. <laughs> you know, a little Jack will do you. <laughs> yeah, a little Jack. Will do you. Okay, thanks for thanks. Thanks. You know, I may I may try to do that, but JT said he's been brining a turkey for the for he does it for a week. Yeah, yeah he's brining it. Right he knows what he's doing. Well, mine is still uh, frozen though, so you'd have to wait for it to thaw then, and Why then you brine it overnight. Food, no. Yeah, yours yeah, is a twenty yeah. pounder. I got two twenty pounders. Yeah, you might not want to take this as a learning experience. Uh, yeah. and, you know, and experiment with a twenty pound turkey. You might want to just wait and do that at a different time. Was that said in seriousness or? 
So I've like never it. had you. I've never had you say anything serious to me on a Saturday morning before. Okay, I was just screwing around. <laughs> <laughs> I got to read a couple sponsors in the morning. We were, uh, you know, looking, thinking about seating charts for Thanksgiving and that. And my wife seating wife's, charts. Well, well, you Isn't got it first come first serve. I got a, no. It's a sit down meal for twenty seven people. I got to put up extra tables and things like that. So, anyways, <laughs> my my wife says, "Now, do we? Sh- are we sure we got the menu covered?" <laughs> And I said, yeah, because what I did is, uh, you know, we cook the turkeys, the two turkeys, and then we'll uh, we'll do uh, do the gravy. And my four sisters and in laws and grandmas and grandpas all bring uh, a side dish to pass. And uh, and my sister Jane usually puts that together, and she appoints, you know, who brings what. But it was brought up this morning at eight o'clock that nobody had signed up to bring dinner rolls. That'd be me. Count me in. I'm your go. I'm your go-to well, guy for dinner. No, no, that means you've got to stay for dinner. Exactly. No, <laughs> drop off the rolls and get the hell out by three o'clock. Good morning, on Kenosha today. Hey, boys, Stan in Paris. Okay, Stan. Who said it was seventy degrees on Roosevelt Road? Uh, we might have stretched that a little bit. <laughs> I think you did stretch it. <laughs> and you stretched the fact that maybe even a plow went down it. No, <laughs> that, no, that, that. we were honest about that. A plow did not no, go down it. You're in. You're in Paris. Not now, now I'm on Roosevelt and 30th. It's a disaster area. Yeah. First, the white cap. Oh, my oh, gosh. Nothing, nothing. Oh, Wait my a minute. Call, call the National Guard. Get the helicopter <laughs> you know, up in the I, air. I, I, We're sending Put the Trump helicopter over. in the sky. You We're know, sending uh, him over right now. You know, <laughs> oh, I hear it coming. I hear it coming. Here comes that Trump. Sit tight. Can you call the Donald, please? Send him to Roosevelt 30th. He's on you know, his way. Pull off to the side of the road. Trump is on his way to pick you Dan, up. Dan from Paris called in yesterday because uh, I said, you know what? Nothing. The snow will be fine. And he says, don't say that. Because we're going to get shellacked. I think that was your word. And You taunted Mother Nature. I did. I taunted Mother Nature. <laughs> taunt remember my comment at the end was, this Easy. is all Pete Sarge's fault. <laughs> okay, now we know who to blame. Boys, thanks for the helicopter. Okay. Beat me up, Trumpy! Oh. <laughs> Boy. Boy, I got to tell you. See, when you tell people it's... Uh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> so, so he headed he hit it over to Roosevelt Road because he thought he was sunny and eighty. <laughs> Take one more before the break here. That's kind of funny. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. The roads are impassable out here in the seventeenth. Oh wait a minute, we've got an update right now. Who's calling, please? The donut, Dave. Donut. The good thing I have GPS of this truck, or I wouldn't know where I'm at. It's so bad out here. It is a near whiteout condition. Is that what I'm hearing, Dave? Not near. It is whiteout condition. You're breaking up a little. <laughs> did you uh, did you see Dale out there? He's got a, um, uh, a a Jeep. He's got a bus. A bus. I mean, yeah. I can't see anything. I I can't see anything. It's hey, well, so sit tight. We've got we've got the copters in the air, and they are headed out your way right now. Overhead, right now. Going okay. overhead, right now. You, there sent, it goes. you sent out those ham radios, but did you tell them those weren't edible radios? Not they're really not ham. <laughs> They are you trying to tell me that we've got we've got volunteers eating the ham radios? Yes, it's that bad. <laughs> are you alone in your Jeep? Yes, I am. Well, let's, you, it, want to, you want us to bring, it is lonely. <laughs> do you want us to bring uh, some some cocktails and some uh, beverages out what for does you? Does that and, mean and a, and, a, and a partner? Well, that would mean that your wife is home alone. <laughs> no, no, she's gone for the weekend. Oh, we'll okay. What you do, go deer hunting? <laughs> yeah, she's deer hunting. <laughs> well, listen, do your best with the streets of Whitecaps out there. Uh, we certainly are all pulling in the same direction to help Alderman Bogdala with the snow removal hey, out hey, there. Hey, Dave, if you could be within a three-mile radius of this place in about 25 minutes yeah, or so, yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome because we I'll, don't, we don't I'll really know. I, I'll see if I can help you out. I'm going to have to get this GPS and get pointed in that direction because it is bad. Do you I, get... I Okay. You got bottled oh, yeah. water? You got bottled water out there? Well, it's a it's a water bottle, but that's not what's okay. in there. <laughs> now, okay. I have buried bottled water every 50 feet in the entire Whitecaps neighborhood. So pull over and start digging. There's a gallon of bottled water underneath uh, the snow. Helps on our way. All right, thanks. All right, geez, well, I feel bad for that guy. Yeah, well, Donut Dave, uh, he's so, da- so darn busy, he couldn't even bring donuts this morning. Well, we're going to take a break, and then we get back. Uh, Are we in the home home, home stretch? Home stretch, we will be shortly. Holy crap! Ahead, Pete, we got, oh, oh, can I say that? the turn and heading down the home stretch for this morning's special Thanksgiving program? If you just arrived on the Pilgrims Holiday Trolley, this is the Kenosha Today Weekly Report coming to you live from Studio A here, it's streaming worldwide here on WLAP AM ten fifty. Brought Just you, trying our best. Uh, brought to you by our major sponsor, the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, and a host of many other very fine local businesses. 
I'm Uncle Scotty Barter, along with the big dog, little Stevie Casey, and our video coordinator, Captain Ron, and the ever-lovable Pistol Pete, who okay. we have all now blamed for this nightmare snowfall. Okay, false alarm, okay, where everything is good. Uh, you know, I just had a call when we were off from a, uh, a young gal down in Gurney, Illinois, and saying that uh, it's, it's so bad she can't see outside her front window. Well, did you tell her to open the shades? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> must have been must have been the blonde roots uh, showing showing through there <laughs> let's oh wait wait a minute i got i got a good good news okay remember i told you about the crisis nobody bringing dinner rolls okay here's a recap for the menu at the casey casey estates steve and jennifer bringing turkey and gravy nanny gales bringing homemade mashed potatoes wow, what we, this is the wilk <laughs> family bringing brussels sprouts sweet potatoes Ooh, and beer brussels sprouts. tom larson's bringing cranberry sauce steve, and cheese ball with steve, crackers why do we care to hear nanny this? judy's bringing pumpkin and pecan <laughs> pie find something quick uh aunt beth <laughs> well, aunt i'm just gonna beth. find a thanksgiving to it aunt to put beth is bringing this. salad uh, and steve, or rolls steve. and butter so we've got the dinner rolls covered thank well, you thank for your God assistance for that. Yes, okay. people are people are stranded out in the white caps here and you got to Give them this uh, dopey uh, menu here. Who cares? <laughs> dopey menu. Of which you're going to charge these people twenty three ninety five. Who cares? Do they know they got to pay? Do you know you got to get out by three o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know I call this the uh, holiday uh, the pilgrims. Holiday Dashing holiday. through the snow. Listen, listen. This poses a very interesting question. Suppose the first pilgrims arrived here on the shores of Lake Michigan. The first thing they see is the trolley. I mean, what do you do? Is this on? <laughs> is this still on? How do you explain that to Queen Isabella? Queen what? Isabella? I think you're... Wasn't she in Spain? <laughs> yeah, but the pilgrims were from England. Oh, well, that's right across the street. And, like you know, 150 years <laughs> later, other than that... Well, if they would have landed, if they would have landed here on the banks of Lake Michigan, they'd see the Burger King statue first. <laughs> yeah, and then the trolley. Yeah, <laughs> then the trolley. So how do you explain that? Who's the oh the hey, queen queen of England? I got a question for you. I got in an argument last night with somebody. It, you know the the snow da the song dashing through the snow. Mm -hmm. Is that a Thanksgiving song or Christmas? Um, I think it's Thanksgiving because they were on their way to grandmother's house. Well, you're thinking That's of um, song. over the river and through the woods. Over is, the is river it, and through the woods. It's a Thanksgiving song. Yeah. Well, what about dashing through the snow? Dashing That's jingle, through the That's snow. jingle bells. That's the prelude to jingle bells. Yes. Okay. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. <laughs> the horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. What is this St. Uh, Joe's da, 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 holiday da, da, play da. again? <laughs> so when you get done eating, do you all sit around and hold, hold hands and hands. and sing uh, holiday songs, kumbaya songs, or do you sing? Do you sit around and sing songs? I know. Actually, it's quite the event. Oh, I know. I'm asking. <laughs> Well, we gather around the table first. I'll be honest, and I have a uh, I have a Thanksgiving prayer that we say. And this year, I'm a little torn on this whole issue. This year, because we bought a new dining room set, um, I told you we don't have the same table that we used to have. So we are actually doing a, a buffet rather than a sit down dinner. But we pray around the table. Carry the sleigh through the quilt. This has the words too. It's very nice. Sorry, we had to interrupt us. Very jazzy. Oh, this is the jazz version. Yeah. This is the Kenosha Today Weekly Report. Call us 262 Thank you. Thank your, you. We're, uh, oh, there's another okay. verse. <laughs> Can we conclude the show with this song? Let's conclude with that song. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm cool with that. So we pray around the table. We have a Thanksgiving prayer. Then we're going to go through the buffet line. Everybody sits down. We'll have some of the things on the table, the dinner rolls, the salad, things like that. Well, we go through the buffet line, and we make sure everybody has a cocktail. We have a Thanksgiving toast, and then we eat, and then we clean the table, and we drink a little more. And then we unzip our pants. <laughs> oh, all right. Actually, no, no, now I, it's a party. Not, <laughs> yeah. actually, party actually, I I, I wear my special Thanksgiving sweatpants. Do you have those uh, pumpkin pie uh, pumpkin pie spandex that you wear? He has a new stain every year Listen, since the seventies. In case in case you're wondering, spandex doesn't go on a guy like me, Pete, or even Paul very well. Well, why Paul's not even he, he's not even in here? Why drag his ass into this? Well, would you <laughs> would you like to see his ass in spandex? <laughs> Well, that's a good point there. Wow. <laughs> well, again, anybody brines a turkey, call in and give me a little bit of advice. I'm stuffing my turkey this year with apples and oranges like I generally do. 262-694-1050. If you have a special recipe, even a vegetable recipe. Yeah, uh, but, you know, don't bother calling in with the cauliflower and the broccoli recipe because well, that's, that's, it's going nowhere. 
Well, that's Kyle. Ky- Ky- well, Kyle, if he's listening, I appreciate the nice, uh, nice thoughts in the paper and a nice article that you had. But I tell you what, I'm not touching your cauliflower au gratin potatoes or whatever. I don't know. Wow. I don't That's, know if it kills the taste of the cauliflower with the cheese. I'm I'm all for it. Well, and Kyle's a great cook. You he know. can make anything taste good. You know That's what I'm saying. So we'll I, I don't know. We'll have to well, see. We should call in because uh, uh, he's got to defend himself. Well, did it, the, does the article say that it's his uh, men, his recipe or Jessica, his beautiful bride? Cauliflower, Isle Groton, Kyle, and Jessica the, uh, Rudin. Uh, Rudin. Yeah, Rudin. both of yeah. them. Yeah, okay. both of them names. Well, I mean. If it goes down, then he can blame his wife. Like, yeah, and he's got, he's, uh, the, I think the article says he's got 12 people coming over. Yeah. You know, maybe not nearly the 27 that we do. Well, but not still, nearly, you know. but uh, maybe I'll go over there. Well, what makes you think you're invited? Well, <laughs> I could go over there with my trench coat and, you know, like a homeless guy. Uh, but, you know, one of the things he points out here, be sure that the date on the turkey needs to be taken out. A 20-pound turkey can take five days. If, is your bird being Mine thawed? is thawed. Yeah, I bought them on uh, your bird's thawed. Bought them th- uh, Thursday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're, they're thawing right now. So your bird is thawing. Well, that's good news. Can I, can I talk about the brand of turkey that I bought? No. Why not? Because they didn't pay to do this. What's the difference? It's a turkey. It's a turkey. No, you're absolutely you're, you're, wrong. A no, turkey is not a turkey. Well, you're not going to promote a, uh, a certain brand. Okay, where did I say that? Uh, oh, uh, the place on, uh, I was coming back from Lake Geneva this last week, and uh, what's the big place out there on, uh, on Highway 50? They uh, farm fresh turkeys. Oh. Fresh turkeys. Okay. I've never cooked well, well, a fresh it? turkey. I did well, um, you can't really tell the difference. I don't think yeah. you can tell the difference. What's the difference? They go out and shoot it in the morning and yeah, skin yeah. it by the afternoon? You know what? I just got a text message. I forgot to mention this, and I did not bring it with me. The recipe is at home on my kitchen table. There's a recipe for White Castle slider stuffing. <laughs> Taking White Castle White hamburgers. Castle hamburgers and turn it into stuffing. You know, good thing you got those stainless steel toilet seats at your house. <laughs> <laughs> and the the one flush. Oh my! Yeah, I left I left the recipe at home. My wife uh, my wife found it in the paper, and it was a. Uh, White Castle Slider Stuffing. You're going to have to get a permit just to use the facilities. <laughs> Good morning. You're in Kenosha today. Hello, Scott. This is uh, Steve in Kenosha. Yes, Steve. I'm just wondering at Mr. Casey's house, after consuming all their fo- all that food, will there be anybody awake to <laughs> see the the Packer Bear game? Well, I got to tell you, until <laughs> 7 o'clock. I got to tell you, Steve, that's the dilemma that I'm facing right now. That's the dilemma. After having Bloody Mary starting at noon, a full meal, pecan pie, and cleaning up the kitchen, am I going to be awake at 7 o'clock hey, to watch Steve, the, the Packer Bear I game? saw the Packers in person last weekend. <laughs> Sleep. Yeah. You know, Steve, that's, that's okay. Take a nap. Well, I don't care. The game, you know, they're, they're going to retire Brett Favre's number and do the, you know, we build the pageantry and everything else that's going on. Hey, maybe you could get a hold of those folks that uh, brought over the the tent for your uh, Oktoberfest. See if they can. Uh, they need twenty seven cots. You can take these after dinner. You can put up twenty seven cots in your living room. I'll take a nap. No, for no, an yeah, hour. no. There's no nap after Thanksgiving dinner. If I take a nap, I'm down for the count. <laughs> <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> well, Steve, you're more than welcome to join uh, join Scott over at my house for a Bloody Mary. I appreciate it. In fact, I uh, I might have been invited by your mother. I don't know, but you, know. <laughs> you might have been invited by my mother. His my mother-, mother just got back in town last night. You probably were, Steve. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, part of the rotary inner wheel. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, Steve. Maybe we will see you at the conference this afternoon. Um, I've. It, it, I may be able to slog down there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Over the river and through the woods, <laughs> slogging to the boathouse. All right. Thanks, David. Right. Thank you. I better read what we, we talked about, Kyle Rudin from the House of Gerhardt. Downtown. Hey, just want to thank you for all the help uh, with the snow removal down here. Everything's going well. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, the... Well, I know in the past uh, we've called upon you guys to help us out, and you've come through. You know, it's scary when you have the snow this early, and usually it doesn't melt around here until April, middle of April. That's six months. So thanks for the help today. And I'm just wondering, I hope this is not going to affect the grand reopening of the Washington Bowl $800,000 velodrome. 
Well, it is if they're having it this afternoon. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's supposed to be in the spring. Huh. But I certainly hope that everything goes well. Hey, you okay, know, I'll get off. I'm sure somebody no, else wants wait to Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got go one ahead, thing. go ahead. After we got rid of the snow early, uh, just, just about a half hour ago from 6th Avenue there, <laughs> uh, I could just only tell you that that's your bid tax dollars at work. And the, next, <laughs> the other day I was driving through there, and I counted five garbage cans on along waste containers full to the brim with <laughs> garbage on the on the ground well it's very interesting you're bringing that up because mrs bjorn who ordinarily doesn't call city hall to voice maybe a comment she called the mayor's office yesterday and the mayor was nice enough to call back and return her call but evidently uh something happened where it got overlooked and but you, you know it's with all the people that are trying to make the downtown better i was just talking with rex davenport yesterday about the broken windows at ground level here and then of course i said to him all these good people who want to help the downtown Yeah, you know, we can't get trash cans emptied or broken windows repaired it's very strange to many of us your wife shouldn't have called the mayor she should have called us we get things done <laughs> You know what? <laughs> and the, I have to mention you said that. And the other thing is, don't you have a guy in charge uh, of Downtown Inc. that's separate? Yes, I we mean, do. How and come he can't do this? I don't know. I I I I, I don't know. Well, well, Mike, uh, we're, Mike, we're real service. quick. Uh, the mayor was in my living room vacuuming yesterday, <laughs> well, and uh, okay. he's, he called. He called from my home. I said, "Listen, if Mrs. Bjorn calls." <laughs> Take the apron off, turn the vacuum off, and call the Bjorn house right now. So that's no, what happened. That's a good guy. Thank you both once again for all the help. Okay. Have a good Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> I got to thank you. Well, the funny thing is the mayor was only wearing an apron. Uh-oh. Boy, you just pushed the envelope, <laughs> don't you? Nice. Yes. <laughs> we welcome the Sunny family. This was back in 1990 when I was... Uh, when I was bartending my second stint there, my uh, I had just met my wife. We were planning a life together, and I came across a, a, a woman who had won a Weber Genesis gas grill at one of these fundraisers. I don't know, the Woman's Club or St. Joe's or one of the church festivals, and she had it for sale. And she came into the Sunnyside Club and said, oh, I got this beautiful Weber grill. I'd never had a Weber gas grill. And of course, I was a bartender. And I said, well, how, how much money do you want for it? And at the time, it was about a $699 Weber grill. And she says, well, uh, if you can give me $400, I didn't have four hundred dollars to save my soul. I went to I went to Hamlet and said, "Look at Dave. We're, you know we're saving for a wedding. This and that. I got boy that, that grill would be just beautiful in the house we're going to rent and in, in the backyard." He loaned me four hundred dollars to buy this brand new Weber Genesis grill, and I paid him back fifty dollars out of every paycheck until I paid him back. That's the type of guy the Hamlet family is. He funded for me my first Weber Genesis grill. That's the truth. Boy, that's a heartwarming story. I'm I'm ready to tear up. Now, would you do that for me? Hell, no. <laughs> hell, hell you wouldn't buy me a drink. <laughs> a Weber grill. The Hamlick family funded uh, funded for me my first Weber Genesis grill. Now, I'd be. That interested. was back in 1990. Now, you claim your story is you paid him back. If Mr. Hamlink's listening, I'd like to hear the the truth. If you actually listen, did the ha- Miss David Senior will tell you that I'm I paid sure him he back. will. David, if you're listening, call me. I want to verify. Sometimes little Stevie has a tendency it to stretch. It was a fire things. engine red mm-hmm. Weber Genesis grill with the side panels, and now you know they're plastic. You know, but the side panels were actually wood. So Pete. at the time, and I had that grill, I think, for 15, almost 20 years. More than you had to wife right at the time. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. <laughs> Scott, it's Carl. I'm stuck. You're stuck at the what in Whitecaps? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep. Get the helicopter in the air, Pete. Get the helicopter in the air right now. Carl, where are you at? I'm on uh, in the Whitecaps, right at the just coming off Highway 50. Okay, can you can you can you hear the helicopter coming? Yep, it's flying upside down, so it's got to be Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Get all, the, get all the Woody. He can get the uh, American Legion. He can get that tank out of the warehouse and throw up a chain and yank me out of here. I got to get out of this. Well, Carl, Donut Dave is somewhere out in Whitecaps right now between the Trump helicopter and Donut Dave. Yeah. We got our people on this, Carl. You can you can tell it's Donut Dave and his uh, SUV. That the, uh, the windows are probably heavily fogged. <laughs> I, I it's think by those himself. guys are union, though, because they're taking a coffee break right now. <laughs> they're city workers. Those are the city workers. Our guys are working frantically. Oh, okay, the city guys. Oh. It's just two guys on one shovel. 
Yeah. That's the city guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the one guy that's not holding it, he's the boss. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Carl. Carl, well, happy Thanksgiving. We'll call your you wife. Too. We'll let your wife know you won't be home till probably Tuesday. I'm not going over with you. No, no, no. I said <laughs> you're going to be str you're stranded in Whitecaps. I'll tell your wife you're not going to be home I till just, Tuesday. Carl, I just got a text from Donut Dave. Tell Carl that I'm on my way. All right. So Donut Dave has got, got you in his sights, and he's on I, his way. I will caution you. He's been out there for three or four hours by himself, alone. So uh, <laughs> good luck with that. You're not wearing spandex, are you? <laughs> no, and you better not have a pair of boots on. <laughs> Jeez, goodbye, Carl. Later. Ooh, i got to read this last You know, that's just who we are. I mean, we try to help people who are in, uh, in I trouble. Think, I don't think a lot of people take this serious here. We're dedicated, and you got guys. I'm a serious journalist. My God, you got guys like Dale, who, you know, the training and the discipline and the weightlifting. It all comes down to today. Yeah, yeah today. We uh, need you, and today, all the training, leave it out on the, on the road today. Yeah, don't, don't take it back. Don't uh, hold back. Uh, yeah. You know, he goes and he watches all those game films and, and sees how the snow piles up and how he can I can it out. There. I can only think that the phone lines are down because I would have thought we would have gotten a phone call from Alderman Bagdala. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that special? <laughs> you don't really think he's going to call after we're trying to help him out, are you? I dare him to. <laughs> Let me read this before we get cut off. <laughs> could go wrong there. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> only well, only, was, only Father Bill knows. It yeah. was unanimously supported the last time the council got to take a, mm -hmm. a okay. vote on it, but uh, Pete, uh, nope. Oh, oh. Listen, uh, <laughs> Camosa Construction. They they actually are doing a, a kind of a I would assume a small project for them. They just redid the uh, handicapped ramp at uh, Our Lady Mount Carmel. At your church over there, the yeah. ramp on the oh, side yeah. of church, Camozzi completely is redoing that. I got to see some of the progress on it the other day. Looks like it's coming yeah. along. It's nice. Now, um, are we going to conclude with a song, correct? Uh, yes, I have Over the River and Through the Woods queued up. I like there. dashing through the... Well, that's sort of a... That's a Jingle Bell I song. Yeah, right. I mean, it, I guess it would it would work kind of as... Uh, as no, Over the, the River and Through the know. Woods. Yeah, I don't know all don't those words. We have words, a, um, a little bit more of an enlightening song. Like an enlightening Christmas. song? Well, I mean, uh, not serious. We have, there was a Thanksgiving song that we had in there. Uh, we did? Those guys, the guys before us, uh, the hunters played it. Oh. Yeah, I got a question for you. <laughs> They're hunters, right? It's an outdoor show? Uh, Why the hell correct. they aren't hunting? Well, you know, it's funny. They were, uh, they were tracking deer uh, out on the back of the property earlier. So, here? Yeah, here. We have, There's deer we have in the back? We have wildlife here. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Can so, you shoot one off the porch here? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't off recommend it, no. But oh, uh, man, you man. know, man, it is still snowing, man. Yeah. So for that guy, that uh, Channel Four weather guy, you know, Nizansky. Yeah. Between five and nine. That's nonsense. Well, that means we're either going to get five, no, those are six, <laughs> seven, five eight, nine. or nine inches of snow. Yeah, but you can call in here and Pete and. Uh, of course, Pete's been held responsible for all of the snow because well, he. Well, I just them. hope that. Uh, well, because the last night the National Weather Service was saying one to three tonight, and one to three today. So I says, "Well, I can do that, Matt. That's two to six. That's not so terrible." Okay. And that didn't quite pan out like that. So. So don't you feel just a little? I'm ashamed? actually supposed really. to be. Uh, I'm hmm. supposed to be driving a Union Grove tonight. To, to do what? Well, there's a party out there i have to go to well you're not going anywhere. i don't think so yeah i you know that's what i was thinking to be honest with you good morning you're on kenosha today hey i'm just calling to give you an update on the 17th district cleanup yeah okay Dale. it's kind of chaotic out here uh, well you I got carl he, stranded yeah we can't find him he must be buried well about donut dave he was out there too he's he's uh stranded yeah he's running around <laughs> All right, now we've got Cindy out there willing to come and help you guys, but I'm gonna, we're gonna bring the uh, the WLIP Hummer vehicle out there, and we're gonna pick up Cindy and bring her into the Whitecaps. And how many volunteers you got out there? About 100, 200, between 100, 200. Yeah, I say about 156. 156. Well, 155 now if Carl's not there. Well, yeah. Well, actually, he counts for two. He's kind of a big guy. <laughs> well, there you go. 
57. <laughs> well, listen, I'm going to be leaving here. I'm going to work my way out there. I've got a whole... I, I just you, went you, over to... You think you're leaving here. Well, I went out to the Piggly Wiggly. I bought... Uh, I got 17 cases of bottled water that I'm bringing out to you, Dale. Okay, good. You know, and I've got... Uh, yeah. Well, He's keeping the vodka to himself yeah. and the rules. <laughs> it's the kind of guy uh, he is. You know, i got to tell you, somebody once told me that this whole snow thing in white caps, it gets old. Why don't you stop talking about it?